the liberals who put it down with tactical. They're people who succumb to the natural human element, the natural human weakness, to let your emotions get in the way of reality. And a lot of people do it. A lot of people who don't realize they're doing it, they consider themselves, themselves conservatives or republicans or, the, you know, uh, free thinkers or objective thinkers, or, but they're not because they will spout a philosophy and then tell you why that philosophy does not apply when whether or not they believe in that philosophy is borne out on the basis of if they believe in it even when it cuts against them. That's how you know. Free speech is easy to be for until free speech is speech you don't like. And then when speech you don't like rises to the level of speech that hurts your feelings, that rises to the level that makes you feel less worthy, that rises to the level of making you fearful of it, that's when you ask the question, do you believe in free speech? Free speech is not the feeling you get when Lee Greenwood comes over the loudspeaker at the rodeo and, uh, uh, and they make reference to Houston and everybody cheers and you go, yeah, the flag! Free speech, jackass. <laughs> That's not free speech. That's bandwagoning. That's, that stuff that makes you feel good. Free speech is the guy standing out in the street, in the street, you know, yelling against your religion, or your race, or your nationality, or whatever else. Free speech, whether you believe in free speech or not, is determined by your willingness to tolerate speech that you dislike. You get this all the time, and David Boyd was out for free enterprise. But, but not when uh, I want to buy stuff and not pay more for it. What I find most interesting about conversations like this is the willingness of people to apply a standard to one industry, but not the next. I also find it interesting that people think that businesses should be in the business of doing what we want them to do, even when that's not what they want to do. It is in your self-interest to go to the gas station and buy gas. It is in their self-interest to sell that gas for more than they paid for it. So why, when they have an opportunity to improve their self-interest, should your self-interest prevail above it? We're not under some, uh, we're not under some uh, law that says we all have to get what we want when we want it. But I don't like the idea of pulling up and I can't pull the gas because they jacked the price up. I like the idea of somebody not getting gas when they need it. I don't walk outside and, and take the homeless guy on the corner, march him to the restaurant and say, feed him, he's hungry, because he might be. Well, sir, we, we, we don't give away free, but give it to him. He's hungry. I mean, we don't, re is it not an emergency when somebody is so hungry that they're going to starve to death? What if you're really, really hungry and you really, really want food? And a restaurant says, sorry, we, we're not a soup kitchen. It's an emergency, isn't it? It's in a bad way. It's in a bad way. Oh, let's see here. Clay, you're up, sir. Yeah, this is Clint. No, Clint? Yeah. Oh. Well, can you be Clay for the purposes of this call? Because I've already called out Clay. All right. Okay, Clay, go ahead. All right. Yeah, this is Clay. Clay. Yeah, go ahead, Clay. All right, hey, um, I perfectly agree with, uh, with you, Michael. I think the biggest issue we've got is the fact that people that unlimited plant parts will have unlimited demand, and the thing that gets paid in one is this idiotic decision just for people to buy water. You got water in the bag. You get a couple of empty.
everything we want whenever we want. Price fluctuations affect our decisions. They provide us incentives. You know, you can argue that when a product becomes too expensive and someone doesn't value it that way, they will find an alternative. It will give them an incentive to go and clean out their tub and bring water through the tap because you can drink that water. The Michael Berry Show. Berry Show. 1190 KEX. Now the news. Our top story today's mass shooting at Freeman High School in southeastern Spokane. Freshman Elisa Vigil says she was putting her backpack in her locker when it happened. I heard a loud pop and I, uh, I turned around and I saw him and he was just... He was just going in here completely passive and he was just shooting one two side. Three others were hurt. Three of arrested the gunman. Fire crews are gaining a little more ground on the wildfire burning in the Columbia Gorge. The Eagle Creek Fire reported this morning at 13% containment, but the size of the blaze has grown. Authorities now estimate the flames have charred more than 37,000 acres. Some evacuated residents are being allowed to return to their homes. A California resort is going to become a bud and breakfast place. Hicksville Pines in Idlewild offers in-room hot smoking as long as you happen to be in room 420. It's the only room management reserves for those who want to add some tennis to their vacation. Traffic and weather are next. Your vehicle has been in an accident and wasn't even your fault. It had happened when you could least afford to ask. But on the bright side, if your vehicle washed out due to the accident, the insurance company might help you see if you can the price of all or local, and we actually exist. The initial consultation is for you. We'll explain your options, how you call my certified official, and even have a money back guarantee and some price back. This report is brought to you by Target Zero. So what is Target Zero? It is our state goal to reduce traffic deaths and serious injuries to zero by the year 2030. Let's reach Target Zero together. Zero traffic deaths in your family. Zero traffic deaths in our state. And now, K2 Weather, brought to you by Standard TV and Appliance.